Hey everyone here from Tunnel Vision TV and in today's tutorial we're going to be looking at Nuke. So welcome to my first Nuke tutorial and we're going to be looking at how to do a muzzle flash using Nuke. So first of all, before I start, I just want to say that I'm also busy learning Nuke at the moment. So the way that I'm going to do this might not be the perfect way, but there are always many different ways that you can achieve the same effect using Nuke. So I'm using a free non-commercial version of Nuke that you can download obviously for free from the Foundry website. I'll put a link in the description where you can go and sign up and get this software. So if you're also new to Nuke, I'm going to try and explain everything as well as I can. So don't worry too much. So the way you can import footage and graphics into Nuke is by using a read node. And the easiest way to create nodes is just make sure that you're in this bottom section of the screen and then by pressing tab on your keyboard. And then you can actually just type in anything here and it will show up all those uh, nodes starting with that letter. So if I type R, you'll see that it will bring up read, roto, roto, paint, etc. And I can just quickly type read and then press enter and that will automatically create a read node. So we want to basically import the footage.mov and also the muzzle flash.jpg. So first of all, let's do footage and we're just going to click on open and that's going to create our read node with that footage. And um, then you've got a viewer as well. And the way to connect your viewer to this node is by selecting this node and then on your keyboard press one. And that will basically create this viewer node and it will connect it to this node and that will show you what you actually see through this node. And then what I also do is right here at the top, you can click and make sure this is set to fit height and that will just fit your footage. So if you resize this section here, it will just fit that to uh, this section here at the top, which makes it a bit easier to work with. And then we also want to import the JPEG. So I'm going to press tab again and read is still selected there. So I'm just going to press enter and then I'm going to click on my muzzle flash and click on open. So now we basically have our muzzle flash here and we've got our footage here as well. So if you want to connect your viewer, you can either use this little uh, line going here from the footage to the viewer. You can just click and drag it and connect it to your muzzle flash and it will show that in the viewer. Or you can just click on this node, press one, and then click on this node and press one to connect it to that. Okay, then before we start with our compositing, we need to change the settings of our project. So here on the side, I'm just going to click all these properties windows by clicking on this little X here at the top. So let's look at the properties for our composition. So here at the bottom, just press the letter S on your keyboard, S for settings, and that's going to open up the project settings window here on the side. And this is where you can set the frame rate and also the size or the dimensions of your composition. So make sure this is set to HD 1080. That's just going to set the dimensions to 1920 by 1080. And my frame rate is going to be 24, so that's fine. You can change that if your footage is maybe set to something else. And then you can close that again. Okay, so I'm going to move my footage to the right hand side and set my muzzle flash here to the left. And I'm going to show you now why I do that. So what we want to do first is we want to put this muzzle flash on top of our footage. And the way to do that is to use a merge node. So I'm just going to click here in the blank empty space and I'm going to press tab on my keyboard and then I'm going to write merge. Okay, and I'm going to press enter to create a merge node. Now you'll see with this node you've got an A input and you've got a B input. And what this will basically do is it will put A over B. So I'm going to connect the A pipe to the muzzle flash and then the B to the footage, which means that it will put the muzzle flash over the footage. Okay, and then we also need to change our viewer. We need to set our viewer to look at the output of this merge. So you can either just relink that like that, or you can just press on the merge node and then press one on your keyboard. Okay, so you'll see in the viewer that we've got the muzzle flash here at the bottom. And now we obviously need to move that muzzle flash into place. So on the timeline, I'm just going to scrub through and try and find that first position where the gun fires. So right there, we want to place the first muzzle flash. So to move something around, we need to create a transform node. So I'm going to click here in the gray area and press tab. And then I'm going to type transform and then just go one down to select transform and press enter. So basically, we want to slot this transform node just right under our muzzle flash. So I'm going to drag that under the muzzle flash and then you'll see that it will create a black box around our muzzle flash. To go into the properties of this transform node, just double click on it and it will bring up the properties here on the side. 
you also see that we've got our merge properties open here at the bottom. You can close that down so that we're only looking at the transform properties. So here at the bottom it says black outside and I'm just going to untick that and that will get rid of that black box around our muzzle flash. Alright, so basically with the transform node you can now go around and click on this and move your muzzle flash around and you can also rotate it and um, scale it and do all these transform actions with it. So basically we want to spin it around so I'm going to rotate it all the way around and then just move it something like that and then what you can also do is you can try and center your uh, pivot point because currently the pivot point is sitting here but I'm not really going to do this in this tutorial so we're going to try and find that position where the first muzzle flash should appear so I'm just going to scrub through the timeline here and as you can see here's the position where the first muzzle flash should appear so I'm just going to move this into place something like that and then what we want to do is we want to animate the position of this muzzle flash. So on the properties of that transform node, you'll see we've got translate and I want to set a keyframe to that. So here on the side, you'll see a little icon with a graph and I'm going to click on that and then I'm going to click on set key. And that's basically going to set a keyframe for that position. All right, then on the timeline, we're going to scrub forward a little bit or you can use your arrow keys on your keyboard and I'm going to find the second position so that's the second position where the muzzle flash should be and it's probably almost going to be in the same position but I'm just going to move it slightly so that you can see how the keyframes work all right so that's fine now if we scrub through this you'll see that the muzzle flash will move slightly and you can also see the information here on the side that will be updated as I scrub through so the next step will be to switch the muzzle flash off and switch it on and to animate that as well so we're going to do that by using the merge node. Right, so I'm going to clear the properties here on the side. So you can click on this little X at the top and it will remove all the property windows from the side. And uh, then I'm going to double click on the merge node and that's going to bring up the merge properties. And then right here at the bottom, you'll see it says mix. And this is almost like a opacity in After Effects. So if you change the properties of this mix controller, you'll see zero will be zero opacity and one will be 100% opacity. So basically we want to animate this slider as well. So on the timeline, I'm gonna to go to my first position where the first muzzle flash should appear uh, right here. And then I'm gonna set a keyframe. So I'm gonna click on this little uh, graph, set key, and then I'm gonna go one frame backwards. So to frame 35, and I'm gonna set this to zero. And then I'm gonna go one frame after that keyframe. So this one, and I'm going to set that to zero as well. So now we basically have that. So it animates from zero to one and then back to zero. Okay, and then we're going to do the same at the second part. So I'm going to go where the second muzzle flash should appear right there. And I'm going to set this to one, go one frame backwards, set this to zero, and then one frame after that muzzle flash and set that also to zero. So now if we play through this, you'll see we've got that. So before we move on, I just want to show you guys how to keep everything nice and neat here at the bottom. So uh, first of all, you can obviously highlight and move these nodes around. And what you can also do is you can hold in command on your keyboard and it will show these little dots on the pipes and you can click them and drag to create these elbows so that you have nice straight lines going across your, uh, your node tree. So just to keep things nice and neat, always very important. Okay, the next step that we're going to do is we want to highlight or we want to light this wall here at the background and maybe also light up some of the, um, the character here on the side as that muzzle flash appears. So really simple to do that actually. And uh, we're going to create an exposure node to do that. So I'm going to press tab and I'm going to type exposure and I'm going to select that. So basically what we want to do is we want to change the exposure of the footage and we don't want to affect the exposure of the muzzle flash. So basically we want to set our exposure right underneath the footage. So I'm just going to slot that in here. And now if we double click on this exposure and it will bring up the exposure properties here on the side, you can use these red, green and blue sliders. They're all connected. You can use them to change the exposure. 
So obviously if I move this, you'll see that everything or the whole shot will change because we're changing the exposure on that. And that's not really what we want. We want to create a mask or a roto and only affect that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click here in the gray area, press tab, and then we're going to type roto for rotoscoping. And before we connect this, we don't even have to connect it to anything just yet. I'm just going to double click on this. And then you can go here on the side and we'll have all your roto um, tools that you can use. So for this, I'm just going to select ellipse and I'm just going to drag out an ellipse here on the side because we want to kind of highlight that wall. And uh, then what you can do is all these nodes or most of the nodes will have a mask input like this one here on the side. So I'm going to use this exposure and then I'm going to click on this little mask arrow and I'm going to drag that over to the roto. So that means it's going to only affect this roto section with this node. So I hope that makes sense. If I double click on my exposure now and I change the properties here, then you'll see it will only affect that area. Now, obviously, we need to feather this mask or this roto. And there are a few ways to do this. You can double click on your roto node and you can change the settings here. So you can highlight that ellipse and you can change the feather and also the feather fall off. But there's an easier way that I usually use, and that's by using a blur node. So I'm going to just click in the gray area here at the bottom, press tab, and then I'm going to type blur. And then I'm going to blur this roto node. So I'm going to set this blur right before the roto node and double click on the blur. And then the size, you can just play with the size and you'll see that will actually blur your roto. Very cool. So I'm going to set this to 200. And then I'm just going to close all these properties on the side to get rid of all these guides like that. What you can also do is you can um, click on one of these nodes and then you can press D for disable on your keyboard and that will temporarily just disable that one node. So yeah, I'm disabling the blur node. So that's without the blur and that's with the blur. And you can click on exposure, press D to disable that and see the difference. So cool, that's looking great. But now we also need to animate this exposure to only show up as the muzzle flash goes off. So I'm going to double click on the exposure node. And then we've got this mix here at the bottom again, almost the same as the mix on the merge node. So if I set this to zero, that will be switched off. And if we set it to one, it will be at 100% opacity. So we need to animate this slider basically. All right, so on our timeline, let's go to the first muzzle flash. So that's at frame 36. And then I want to set a keyframe on that exposure. So I'm going to right click on this graph, set keyframe, and then I'm going to go one frame back. So frame 35, set that to zero, and one frame after the muzzle flash, frame 37, set that back to zero. And then we're going to go to the second muzzle flash, which is frame 40. I'm going to set that to one and go one frame backwards, 39, set that to zero, and then one frame after the muzzle flash, 41 set that back to zero. Cool, so let's have a play through and see how that looks like. It's looking pretty cool. And what you can also do when your mouse pointer is over the viewer, you can press space and that will just make it a bit bigger. And then you can hit play at the bottom and you can just click on the timeline to kind of loop it to see what happens in that area. So let's just press space bar again to minimize that view. So another thing that we want to do is we want to just create a some highlight on the person as well as this muzzle flash goes off you can see the we've got that nice uh, exposure on the wall but we maybe want to do the same thing with this person as well and a really easy way to do that you can just go into this roto node where we created this ellipse and we can just add a few more rotos to the shot so i'm going to click here on the side and i'm going to use the bezier tool and i'm just going to draw a quick mask or roto around the face area something like that and you'll see immediately, if I close these properties down, you'll see immediately that we've got that roto shape around the face now as well. And if I scrub through here, you'll see it will have the same animation as the uh, ellipse on the wall. Okay, so let's go into the roto node again, double click on it. And then I'm going to create another roto on the body of this person. So I'm going to go to my Bezier tool again, and I'm just going to draw a very rough roto, maybe this area there. And we're going to close down the properties. And then let's just scrub through that. So you'll see that we've got this little bit of light on the person as that muzzle flash goes off. And let's just quickly play through that. 
So it's looking pretty nice. Okay, let's go back to our node view. And let's say we want to add a glow to our muzzle flash. Very simple. Click in the gray area. I'm going to create a glow node. So just type in glow, press enter. And we want to affect the muzzle flash only. So remember, this is our muzzle flash here. And I'm just going to drag this glow right under the muzzle flash because we only want to affect that. Double click on the glow. And then you've got the properties here on the side. So you can play with the brightness and also the tolerance and also the size of the glow. So let's maybe set the size quite big, maybe 95 and bring the brightness down a little bit. So we just get like that slight glow. So if I toggle this on and off, you'll see that's with the glow and that's without the glow. Cool. And now we can play through this again. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so let's say we want to add a color grade to this shot. So I'm going to create a grade node. So just type in grade, press enter, and we want to do the grade um, after our merge node. So we want to grade everything together. So I'm going to slot this grade right underneath our merge, double click on it to bring up the properties. And then you've got all these controls on the side so that you can grade your shot. So we're going to go to the gain controller and we're going to press on this little color wheel. So maybe we want to add some blue to the shot. So I'm just going to click and drag towards the blue, maybe something like that. And then also want to change the white point. So I'm going to click and drag and play with the white point slider. I know this is not the best grade, but it's just kind of to show you how to do that. And let's play through this quickly and see how that looks like. Cool. So that's looking nice. And lastly, let me show you how you can export this or render your composition. So to render, we're going to use a right node. So I'm going to press tab and then I'm going to type right and select the right node. And you want to slot this in just before the viewer because you want to obviously write everything before you see it. So I'm just going to slot it in here, double click on the right node to bring up the properties on the side. And uh, then first of all, we're going to set the file type. So I'm going to click on that and I want to export this to a MOV file. So I'm going to click on MOV. And just below that, you'll see codec. So I'm going to click on that. And this is where you can select your output codec. And I'm going to write this to a Apple ProRes 422 file. And then you can click on file just next to it. There's a little file icon. And this is where you can just set the output file. So I'm going to call this render. And I'm going to also add the extension .mov. And then I'm going to click on save. And then we're going to click on the render button here at the bottom. And OK. And that's basically going to start with the rendering process. Okay, let's have a look. Let's go to the folder. There's the render file. And let's play through that. And there's our final render. Cool, so this is the end of my first Nuke tutorial. Let me know what you guys think. And if you want to see more Nuke tutorials, let me know. If you want to see more After Effects tutorials, let me know as well. And uh, yeah, give me a thumbs up if you like this one. Give me a thumbs down if you didn't like it. And if you want to see more tutorials, click on that subscribe button. Cool guys, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys next week. Cheers, bye.